We have all the stuff. Pretty much everybody wants to own a piece of SpaceX, right? The problem is it's not a publicly traded company. It's private. So the question, how do you buy SpaceX stock? What if I told you there's a fund that you could buy where you could own SpaceX, Epic Games, OpenAI, and more? If a meme stock had a baby with an altcoin, it might look like this. Bruh. This has almost 35% of the portfolio in SpaceX. You can also see other names like Axiom Space, Epic Games, OpenAI, Superhuman, companies like Stripe, Instacart, Soka. Discord, Klarna, Plaid, and more. Check out some of these top stories. This fund owns SpaceX and other unicorns. It soared from $9 to $100 and surged 1,110% since it became public. This fund is called the Destiny Tech 100, ticker DXYZ, pronounced Destiny. Choose your destiny. Now this is not an ETF. This is a closed end fund. So you'll see CEF. That means the stock trades on the exchange, but represents a portfolio or basket of securities, not a company. Similar to an ETF, but it's different. The difference comes from the fact that a closed end fund has a fixed number of shares. And so the basic concept of supply and demand is a big factor. The underlying value of the securities in DXYZ is not marked to market each day. The price is simply determined by buyers and sellers in the market. So capital does not flow into or out of the funds when shareholders buy or sell shares. This is really important. A closed end fund share price is almost always different from its net asset value. NAV. And investors need to be aware of the resulting premium or discount. Now this has a 2.5% annual management fee that is expensive. Currently has 23 companies in the portfolio. The target portfolio is 100 companies. And here's the full list. So SpaceX is over one third of the current portfolio. Relativity Space is one that we talk about in Discord. Again, these are all private companies. So you can't go out and buy the stock on the open market. So companies like Impossible Foods are on here, Bolt Financial, financial, Flexport, and it's holding about 9.1% cash right now. So here's a list of eligibility criteria, things like foreign legal structures, high turnover, cultural health red flags. Also, no burdensome financial structures or heavy debt. For many companies at the pre-IPO stage, there's a potential to make 10 to 50x returns. But is this too good to be true? Let's dig further. All right, so this was just listed on March 26, and it rocketed to $100. Now look at this. The NAV V as of 1231 $4.84. $4 so on March 26, you could have bought this for $9 and it ripped to $105. So insane numbers here. 52 week low, 825, and that high, 105. Hey there, champ. A friend told me you got a little too high. So at the time of this post, the fund valued at $1.1 billion. Remarkable considering had net assets of only $52.6 million at the end of 2023. Alrighty then. So an article here from Axios, why it matters. When markets are frothy, you'll sometimes see investors paying dollars for dimes. Markets seem to be frothy right now. So I posted this in the meme channel in Discord and it's one of my favorites. It's from a value investing group on Facebook. So Sean here read a post in the group about IPOs. What are your thoughts about buying the Destiny Tech 100 fund, DXYZ, for the long term? Now, Ken says, definitely not value investing. This is the kind of stuff that gets hyped near the end of bull markets. 
emotional damage. So I'd like to hear from you. Drop me a comment. Are we at the end of this bull market? So we've been talking about NAV. So most of the time, funds trade at a discount to an NAV, so net asset value, which is to say the market capitalization of the box is lower than the value of the securities in the box. Currently, the average discount for close end funds is about 9%, with only 14% of funds trading at a premium to NAV. So you can see back in 2021, really at the height of the pandemic, this goes all the way back to 2014. We actually saw a premium, but right now the average is a discount of 9%. Now this fund of course is trading at a significant premium. Even though it's pulled back from $105 to $50, it's really in its own stratosphere at this point. Okay, with all that said, is this something that I'm buying? Is it something that you should consider in your own portfolio? I'll share my thoughts. Before I do that, there's one other way that you can play this. There's one other way that you can buy SpaceX and other companies that are not listed publicly right now. So this is called the ARK Venture Fund Portfolio. So you got it right. Kathy Wood of ARK, they've got their own pre-IPO venture fund that you can invest in. You can see it also has SpaceX, it has Epic Games and other companies as well, like Anthropic, Databricks, also Axiom Space that we saw in the other one, Flexport, Hammerspace, Pave Financial, and more. Now this has a 2.5%. 0.75% management fee, the other one 2.5%. It's actually down 4.34% year to date. Net assets right now are $53.7 million. And this is also a closed end fund. Now this is showing that 2.7% management fee, but also 0.15% service fee and other expenses, it shows 2.86%. And the ticker on this one is ARKVX. So obviously, if you invest in either of these funds, there are gonna be expensive management fees because you don't have a lot of other options. And here's the full list you can see on your screen. I'll just scroll through these. You can take a look on your own. But Shield AI, this is much different than the other fund. A lot of different names that you didn't see before. There is some overlap, but very different. Now you'll notice while I'm scrolling through those names, it's a combination of companies that you can't buy that aren't publicly traded stocks, but also stocks like Tesla that you can just go buy yourself. This goes all the way down here, Rocket Lab being 46, and that's one I do wanna mention. But one thing to point out before I go on, SpaceX is only 4.74% of this fund, versus around 35% in the other. Now, of course, Rocket Lab is not the same company as SpaceX, but that is another way to play the space exploration sector. That's gonna be a spec stock, a very long-term investment. It's something I've been buying recently in my portfolio as spec. If you're looking to invest in SpaceX, one of the best ways to get exposure is gonna be through that DXYZ fund. If you want my opinion, you want my two cents, I think it's still ridiculously overvalued even at $50. Now, if you're a trader and you're nimble and you can get in and out, you can make a lot of money, especially on that first one, that Destiny fund, but you have to know what you're doing. And of course, most here, we're focused on long-term investing, not trading. I think both of those close end funds, they could provide opportunity like you saw earlier. 10 to 50x opportunities, but be careful chasing that. Be careful with the FOMO and understand what you're buying. If you do buy one of these funds, consider it very high risk spec. I would manage that, have a very small percentage of your portfolio, maybe even less than 1% of your portfolio and look at it as one of those 10x or zero plays. But honestly, for me, I would, especially on the DXYZ, I'd have to have that come down significantly before I'd buy it myself. Right now, what I own for space is just Rocket Lab, less than 1% as spec, and I'm looking to add more. If this is helpful and you're new here, subscribe to the channel, click that bell for notifications, drop me a like, drop me a comment. Thanks for watching. Take care.